the Northern Territory has recently had its territory-wide elections to determine who would head up its Legislative Assembly. That's much akin to the state elections in other states like New South Wales, Queensland or Victoria. And the result's interesting, because they show a complete wipeout for Labor, which had previously held government, but now looks set to lose government and set to lose quite spectacularly, with a general swing against Labor, especially in many key divisions. Of course, in some divisions, Labor appears to have either retained them or potentially had a swing toward it, but that was simply not enough and not sufficient to outweigh all of the swing against it in many other electorates, including areas such as encompassing Alice Springs, but also more country and regional locations. So let's have a look at what happened in the Northern Territory and why it all went so wrong for Labour. And if you've got any particular thoughts about this, well do let me know that in the comments below. Now my overarching view on this is it was probably largely attributable to things such as crime, which had been out of control in Alice Springs. Alice Springs has been rolling from curfew to curfew to curfew amongst spates of youth crime. Many people that are affected by this are simply sick of it and want something done. And if crime is getting worse under a particular government, people, out of desperation, amongst other things, are going to turn to the other group in order to try to resolve the situation. In this case, that would involve turfing out Labour and bringing in the country Liberal Party. In this case, overall, it appears the country Liberal Party came out well ahead, winning potentially up to 15 seats in the Legislative Assembly. And one would appear to need 13 seats to actually form government in your own right because there are 25 seats overall. Now, it had been originally considered that maybe Labour might be able to form a minority government in alignment with the independents, but that now appears to be incredibly unlikely on the current vote count. And indeed, Labour appears to have actually conceded, and the Control Liberal Party has taken victory. So let's have a look at some of these seats in turn. Arafura is the one where Labour appears to have gained the most. There was reportedly a 17.6% swing toward Labour which is interesting and stands in stark contrast to many of the other divisions. This is again even more interesting, given the main second place here was the country Liberal Party. But of course, Arafura, if we look at it, is one that would be more likely aligned with the government and with public servants and the like. Now, I don't uh, present myself to be an expert on the Northern Territory, but we can see broad trends and parallels in the Northern Territory that are somewhat similar to what happens in other states when there are elections. If you move through to the next ones, we've got Araloon, Independent retains that, Arnhem, Labour retains that. Again, this is more in the northern part, or sort of northeastern part of Northern Territory, and again, would be more aligned with that type of government body, so Labour retains it. However, there was a swing toward the country Liberal Party, and at the time of recording, about 3%. Barclay, Blaine, Breitling, and Brennan, they were all retained by the country Liberal Party with a swing toward it. In Brennan, at least at the time, with 53% of the vote counted, there was a 22.6% swing toward the country Liberal Party. Now, of course, that swing could very easily decrease because a 22.6% swing is massive and probably is going to be driven by some core areas within that division, but still, it is rather telling. In Castor Arena, the country Liberal Party is ahead, although they aren't guaranteed to win at the time of recording, with a 17.7% swing. Daily, Labour is likely to retain this, and again, that's one more driven by uh, inner cities and public servants and the like. Ryersdale, a country Liberal Party gain. Fanny Bay, Greens appear to be ahead. Fong Lim, country Liberal Party gaining that. Goida, country Liberal Party gaining that. Woja, Labour is retaining it. Karama, country Liberal Party ahead. Catherine, country Liberal Party ahead. Mocha, Independents are likely to retain it. Namachira, country Liberal Party ahead. Nelson CLP is ahead. Nightcliff, Labour is ahead. Port Darwin, Sanderson, Spillett, and Wanguri, CLP, is ahead and is gaining. So in essence, we're seeing a lot of seats where the CLP has made gains and taken these away from the Labour Party, and also has had significant swings toward it. Some swings in the vicinity of 22 or 20 or so percent, depending on the exact electorate. Now, of course, like I've said, some divisions have had swings toward Labour, but they simply aren't sufficient to offset the swings toward the CLP. But not all Darwin-type electorates are actually going toward Labour. There's actually quite a bit of a mix here. Now, overall, the CLP looks like it's going to have 15 seats, and it required 13 seats to win outright majority in the Legislative Assembly, and therefore form government. Labour, at the moment, looks like it's set to have about four seats, 
But of course, that is subject to increasing because there's four seats in Dart at the moment. And independents, maybe Greens, look set to have about two seats. But again, four seats are in Dart at the moment. So it's not totally clear how those four in Dart seats are going to fall. But in general, this has been a wipeout for Labour. Now, in terms of why, well, when we look at Alice Springs, well, the areas in Alice Springs, there are two overall divisions in Alice Springs. You've got Breitling and you've got Araloon. If we look at Breitling and Araloon, we can see that Labour has not really picked up very much there. In Breitling, the CLP is retaining that one. And in Araloon, well, what we can see is the independents are likely to retain it. Now, this suggests an interesting phenomenon. It suggests that the CLP and the independents, which are notably not Labour and notably were not in government, are retaining those seats. Now, that might suggest the local members are not being penalised for all of the crime in Alice Springs. And or it could, in theory, suggest that crime is not driving this election because they didn't turf out their current representatives. But more likely to my mind, people realised that the current representatives, if they're not in government, can't really do very much to effectuate change. Because if Labour has outright majority and can steamroll over everyone, then in essence, your local representative has no power. And therefore, they realised the local representative wasn't necessarily to blame for their misfortunes. Rather, it was the government that was more to blame. Notably, if we look at Breitling, we can see a 2.3% swing toward the CLP, suggesting that people weren't turning on it or blaming it for the crime. One could potentially try to draw inferences about whether people were reacting to the referendum, which occurred in 2023. I'm not totally sure whether that really drove the results that much. Now, the referendum was, of course, defeated in the Northern Territory. It could be that some Territorians balked at the referendum and associated the Territory government with the federal Labour government and saw the two as being intimately connected. And as a result, when the Territory government went all in on the referendum, then it could be that some people in the Northern Territory voted against the Territory government, perhaps as a proxy for the federal government. It could also have been the concerns that the federal government was more enamoured with symbolic measures that were supposedly to try to look like they were doing something for Indigenous Australians rather than things that had an actual difference, which is manifesting the crime spree in Alice Springs, for example. I.e., people might have been saying the federal government is not doing enough to help Indigenous Australians, they're only going to try to show that they're helping, without actually helping. Trying to do symbolic things that give them credit and make them look good on Twitter, without actually making a real difference on the ground. One could also make an inference that the Labour government had eight years of government in Northern Territory. Seemingly things got worse under its watch, so Territorians just decided, well, let's make a change and see whether someone else can do a better job after eight years. So there is a degree of fatigue with the existing government. There might also have been a degree of concern about the broader economy. Now, the broader economy is generally going to be a federal responsibility, i.e. fiscal policy at the federal level is really what is going to drive up interest rates, i.e. Jim Chalmers and Anthony Albanese going out and spending insanely on things that aren't productive is what is keeping interest rates incredibly high, and the RBA has specifically said that. Territory or local spending can exacerbate this, but it is less severe in magnitude and size as compared to federal expenditure. As a result, people might have blamed the local government, so in this case the Labour government at the territory level, for what in essence might have been something going on at the federal level. And or what was going on at the state level might have just been a microcosm what was happening at the federal level and people were treating the two as being intimately linked and therefore turfing out the territory government because they didn't like policies that were also reflected at the federal level. And in a case, there were broad numbers of reasons for why we could have seen the territory government go in this case. Regardless, the Labour government is out and the CLP is going to come in and is going to take control of the Northern Territory. It remains to be seen what happens in future elections throughout Australia. The Queensland one is coming up. It'll be interesting to see whether Stephen Miles manages to train government, or whether David Crisofelli, who is leading up the coalition, manages to win despite all of his slight missteps. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about what implications this has for other elections as well in the comments below.